Lord, right now I pause, I say thank you. I ask you that you take full control of me on this morning, oh God. I ask you that you give me the words to speak. I ask you that you give me the words to say. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We'll be starting at verse 35 in Mark. <clears throat> and the same day when the eve was come, he said unto them, let us pass over unto the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him, Eve, as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. And, the, and there arose a great storm of wind, and the waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder hinder part <laughs> hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillar <coughs> with him and said unto him master carest thou not that we perish and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea peace be still and the wind ceased and there was a great calm and he said unto them why are ye so fearful how is it that ye have no faith and they feared exceedingly and said one to another, What manner of man is this? Even the wind and the sea obey him. All right, amen. Mm -hmm. This morning I'm going to use for a topic. We're going to start taking it from verse 35. Y'all pray with me. Let us pass over unto the other side. As we realize that this is the first Sunday of our year for 2015, unfortunately I wasn't able to be in the New Year's Eve service because I had to work. But I thank God, even though I was at work, I was around people that knew who he was. And we were still able to say a prayer just to say thank you, allowing us to see another day. Amen. Now, on this particular um, passage, we realize that Jesus was teaching on the side of the lake. But it's a couple of things that I want to point out to you. I've looked it up and I've researched it because I wanted to know because, you know, people always say that a parable is a story. Well, I'm nosy. I wanted to know what it was. So I looked it up. Mm -hmm. It says it's a statement or commitment that covers, that conveys a meaning indirectly by the use of compression or analogy or their life. The understanding, okay, so basically it says that Jesus was basically taking something that you can really look and see, but yet for you to be able to say, hmm, if this works, that can work. And I notice that sometimes whenever I get to talking, I start thinking about little stuff that my granddaddy used to say. It didn't make quite sense whenever I was younger, but now that I'm older, they were speaking in little parables, but they wasn't Jesus. But little stuff that he said kind of made sense. The little saying, a hard head make a soft behind. Think about it. <laughs> you laugh and I want you to catch it because you in here. And you know me, one of the things I do, I want from the littlest person to the oldest person to catch what I'm going to say. If a hard head make a soft behind, that means whatever I choose to do, and I'm going to use your book because you're mine. If mama say don't do it, and you go and do it, and you fall and get hurt, then who you going to come running to and crying to? Mm -hmm. Exactly. But if you listen the first time when mama said it, would you have fell and got hurt? Mm -hmm. Exactly. So what happened? That hard head made you have a soft behind. <laughs> All right. Now. now, the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to understand why the Lord gave me, let us pass over unto the other side. Now, we got some children in here this morning, and y'all all in school, so I want to see what your teacher's teaching. I need one person to tell me what a verb is. It shows action. Go ahead, baby, tell me. Uh-uh. You can raise your hand. Tell me, baby, what, what is a verb? Huh? What does a verb do? In English, you learn exactly what a verb does in a sentence. What does it do? It shows action. All right, so that means that's something that you want to put into showing what's going to happen, right? 
All right, so I want to know why did the Lord use pass instead of go? We always say, I'm going to the store, or I'm going here. We don't never use the word pass, so, you know, I'm a little nosy. I found out that pass is a verb and a noun. Can you tell me what a noun is? You know what a noun is? Go ahead. Person, place, or thing. Exactly right. So guess what? Now, past was, what did I say it was? It was a verb and a noun. So that means past is a person, place, or thing, or a form of action. All right? The first verb says it move or cause to move in a specific direction. All right. Now, the scripture said, well, the um, topic said, let us pass over unto the <laughs> other side. So that means we're going to move or cause to move in a specific direction, which means wherever God is leading you and taking you, come on, wherever God is leading and taking you, that means you got to do some cause and effects, some stuff got to happen, right. which means you can't do it on your own because whenever you try to do it on your own, it don't work. But there has to be a cause. So you got to know why you're moving. Mm, why are you going to the other side? Yes. All right. It says go past or across. Leave behind on one side and proceeding. Did you catch that part? It said leave behind. Mm -hmm. Which means everybody that go with you and say they for you, they are not always for you. Which means at some point in time, you got to learn to leave them behind. All right. All right. The next one says a noun. Now we just said a noun was what? A person, place, or thing. All right. It says an act insists of moving past or through something. Person, place, or thing. It said or through something, which means it's not going to be easy. We find out in the passage of the scripture that whenever they was on the lake, a storm came up. The winds got the blowing. The water started coming in on the ship. What did they have to do? It said, insist of moving past or through something. Were, were we going to sit in the storm or was we going to pass through the storm? Come on. Which means in 2015, everything is not going to be easy. We can't look for it to be easy, which means the storm and the wind is going to come. But guess what? You can pass through it. It can be behind you. Right. You don't have to stay there. All right. All right. The next noun said a successful completion of an examination or course. I'm going to read it up again. A successful completion. Did you catch that? Mm -hmm. Completion, which means it's going to be complete. All right. All right. Of an examination or course, which means we're going to have to stay and examine ourselves. But yet to maintain to see if we still on what? On course. Which means we can't do it our way. We got to do it God's way. Come on now. All right. Now I'm going to also take and give you some extra scriptures to support what I'm saying, okay? Whenever I remember I said that you had to go through something. And whenever you're going through something, through something, man, it could be anything. I know with me, a lot of times, especially last year in 2014, and I just refuse to go there again, it has always been Beatles. Saying like month after month, something got off key, or something got off and beat. And every time you think you got it worked out, it's still not worked out. Mm -hmm. Or the other one was children. God knows, that's a test there. <laughs> Especially since I'm dealing with this teenager. So on that note, I have to realize that's just a storm. But, you know, God gave me some scriptures to help me out and go along with it. And one particular one that I did pick out was 1 Peter 5 and 7. It says, cast all your cares upon him, for he cares for you. Yeah. All right, so that means whatever bothers me, mm -hmm. whatever's on my heart, whatever's yeah. pressing me down or weighing me down, which is that storm, that, that wind is blowing, and I feel like I'm about to suffocate and I'm about to drown, mm -hmm. I can cast it. Which means I can throw it to him and say, Lord, it's in your hands. Yes. And I can leave it there and don't have to fear about it. Because uh -huh. that's what happened with these disciples. They got in fear. We don't have to be in fear. The yeah. Lord has showed us over and over and over and over again of what he can and will do. Yes. 
right? I'm almost finished. <laughs> All right. Now, the next one was, even though I got to go through that storm, remember I gave you a noun, and in a sense, it says a successful completion of an examination course. Well, I decided that I wanted to see what I could use to back it up. All right, it says in James 1, 2 through 4. This came out of the NIV Bible, y'all, so King James might read a little different, but I enjoyed it when I read it. It says, consider it. Peace, joy, my brother and sister, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith proceeds, preserves, and let preserve finish, it looks, you know, it works so that ye, you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Did you catch that? Yeah. Not lacking anything. Thing, which means whenever I get there and the storms come up mm -hmm. and it may seem like I'm about to fail and mm -hmm. it may seem like I'm about to yes, drown, yes. I realize and I know that I can count it all joy yes. because I know that I got to complete. Mm -hmm. I got to get to the completion yes. and the examination to make sure I stay on course because I want to be able to sit there and say, I can count it all joy. Yes. I have just completed my message to y'all. Let us, don't leave me behind because I don't want to be left behind. So I'm going to say it to y'all. I'm going to bring y'all with me. Let us Let pass over unto the other side. Right. God bless you.